Hey, this is Jay, and just a little tutorial. This is for somebody whose name I will not reveal because I think I'm helping him do his homework. So um, anyway, I'm not gonna not gonna blow it for you, Carl. So here's the demo, which just uh, shows some cards, and it does eight uh, different random cards every time I refresh it. And if I, if you want to do six or nine or whatever, uh, you can just do this, and it will just do now. It does six, and when you click one. It goes away. Now, what is this tutorial about? It's not just doing this. Basically, it's just a discussion of uh, creating multiple objects and then keeping a handle to them so that you can reference them or not keeping a handle to them. And in this case, uh, I don't have any control over this right here, this object here. Uh, for example, if we look in here, and we'll go through uh, all the code in just a second, um, but to create the cards we're doing a for loop here and we're doing it however many cards we pass in so that's right down here we're passing in a six and so it's going to do six cards and each one of those cards uses the same local variable car called card image so we've got card image here and then we're doing something with it and then we loop around and we use card image again so the first card that we created with card image we can no longer use the card image variable to access that card because a second card now has that variable name so why is it still on the screen why when we do this do we have six cards and not just one card that's because and there's a there's a technical reason for this and I'm going to use the untechnical reason the technical the untechnical reason is because behind the scenes Corona knows that it still exists. It still exists until you get rid of it or until Corona gets rid of it. And and you get rid of it using something like uh, display. There we go. Up here. Display.remove event target. We'll get to this code um, in, a, in a few minutes. So until you get rid of it, that image is going to be there. Uh, however, the, the way that you access it is not going to be there. Now, you might think that when we get done with this function that card image will at least be a handle to uh, the last card that it does this ace of hearts here but that's not true either because this is a local variable and it's local to this function so once you drop out of this function because we call we call deal cards it goes in here loops six times or however many times we pass it then it falls back down through once it leaves this function card image is not uh, it's not available to us at all, period, as a variable name that contains anything. Uh, because it's a local variable, it's local to this function. Once this function falls out of scope, this card image variable is out of scope also. So how does this actually work? Well, before we are leaving this, uh, this loop, in fact, each time through this loop, we create card image, we put it in a specific spot, and this is um, just to just kind of space the cards across the screen, depending on whether there's uh, six or 46. Okay, so it still works. And and then we add an event listener to that object. Go back around through here, and and it and it continues on through this loop. But that object is still in the background, and that object that you created still has its own event listener. So once you do this thing the second time, third time, 15th time, whatever it is, um, it's a new image. It's a new card image. It's a new display object that Corona knows about in the background. And each one of those, because of this loop here, has an event listener on it, which calls move it when we tap that card. And that is how uh, we tap this and it goes down because when we tap that card, it jumps up here to move it. And we do a transition to on event.target, which, of course, is whatever we have tapped. The object that we have tapped is the target object. And so over the course of one second, we change the Y coordinate down to screen bottom plus 50. And then on complete, we can call a function, or I just have a function in line here. But basically all it does is display.remove event.target. And so that gets rid of that card and now that card is nowhere. You could try to access it again and, and you can't do it. Okay, so that is one way to deal with cards that don't have a handle. I mean, we, we created it with this for loop here. We create 16 cards in this case and each one of those can be tapped. But if you wanted to try to do something else, you can't from from outside now 
uh, because because there is the tap thing you could do some more stuff later because anytime you call tap you can jump up here you have event.target available so that you know what card you tapped but outside here if I want to have a, a function that does something with all of the cards that are shown on the screen at once uh, I don't have a good way to do that now there are some ways you can you can walk through the stage uh, and, and the stage is basically your screen here. You can walk through the stage, find all the display objects, and see if it's a card or not and stuff. But there's no, there's no good simple way to do that. Except we could create a group. And if we put all of those in a group, um, we can deal with a group all at one time. So let's go ahead and uh, back up here. Let's say... Uh, local hand group so this is a hand of cards we're dealing and, and we're putting it out here so that it's available uh, inside of the move it function and inside the deal cards function so this is just a forward reference to it so down here inside of deal cards we're going to do hand group equals uh, display dot new group and then right here inside the loop, we're going to do hand group insert card image. Okay, so first time we jump into deal cards, we're going to uh, create a display group called hand group. And then each time through this loop, we're going to take hand group and insert the new card image that we just created. Now, uh, up here, we're going to uh, change this. Let me copy that and paste it in here. And instead of event.target that we remove, we're going to say remove hand group. And the cool thing is that when you remove a display group, it removes all of the child display objects inside of it. And then we'll change this to hand group. And now... Uh, each card still has an event listener on it, so that's probably not what we would want to do. We would probably just want to uh, put an event listener on the group or something. But let's just go ahead and use this and run it and see if I put in a typo in here. Now when I click this, all of them go down. Okay, so now we have a way that we can actually access... Well, kind of. We, we, we don't really have a way that we can access each individual card but we have a way that we can access all of the cards on here as a group so if you have stars in the sky or cards on the table or um, coins on the mountain or whatever you could actually throw them into a group and then do something with the group and all of those objects will be affected as a result and just because i mentioned the uh the rest of the code just uh run through here real quick just at the top we've got some more forward forward references and variables that we might need the the card thing's kind of cool i put together a table that has the suits uh clubs hearts spades and diamonds and then the values uh ace, ace through king and the reason i did that was because over here i have card images and these are there's the uh six of clubs and you can see that the file name is c6 and uh Here's a DJ.ping for a Jack of Diamonds. And so because of that, I put together this, where am I going here? Put together this uh, routine called get one card. Now you can pass a suit in if you want, and it will give you just cards related to that suit. But if you don't pass one in, it will give you a random suit. And the way I do that is I just use uh, suit equals card suits. That's this table. And I get a random number from one to however many suits there are up there. And the same thing for the card value. For values, I grab something out of card values from one to the number of values up here in this table. And then it concatenates those together. So in the case of um, six of clubs, it would be C6 that I would be returning. And then when I create the cards, you do card, get one card. And I do uh, card images, and I concatenate that card, C6, and then that's concatenated with .png. Just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and uh, try getting only uh, hearts. So we'll pass in 
uh, an H there and run this and now all we get is uh, just heart cards or we can get in we can get spades and so on so that's a cool little routine if you're doing uh, if you're doing something with with uh, cards you just leave a blank and you get completely random cards like that so I hope, I hope this helped with uh, your homework or whatever it else it is uh, but it's just just a look at how to create multiple objects in a loop but still be able to deal with those objects. Um, and one other thing we didn't get into here is if you really needed to, you could create a uh, another table up here. And let's say it's local my hand equals nothing. It's an empty table. And then down here, you would do something like my hand, my hand plus one equals card image. All right, what this does is this takes the my hand table and adds this newly created card image to the end of it. And that's what this does. So what's our index? Well, the first time uh, this is going to equal zero since it basically it's the length of the my hand table with nothing in it, it's going to be zero plus one. So your first index is going to be one my hand one equals card image the next time through the loop it's going to evaluate to my hand two equals card image and so on so you're going to end up there with um, at, by the time you drop out of here you're going to end up with my hand being a table that actually holds uh, in this case 16 card images one at a time and then you could go through and you could walk through this my hand table um, later on in some other routine to be able to grab each card in there and do something with it So I'll go ahead and, and just leave that in there commented out just so that you can kind of see uh, Where it would go and the same with this. I'll go ahead and comment that out And so right now the uh, code that you get uh, is set to uh, Get rid of all of them at once if you want to play around with that uh, you can uh, Get rid of that comment this one out and now we're back to one at a time and so on so i hope that helps uh, with whatever you're going to be doing uh, cards buttons coins rocks little dogs uh, whatever kind of game you're doing